Right now, though, on the other end of my line is uh, Scott DeCamp from MLive.com. Scott has been uh, back and forth a little bit to Lakeland, and he comes in to talk a little Tiger baseball. Scott, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Great, great, great to have you tonight. Uh, Joker Merchant Stadium, uh, reading in the papers and uh, looking a little bit online. Uh, apparently, they've, they've refurbished the stadium down there a little bit. What do you think of the, the new digs? Oh, they, yeah, they, they did a really nice job. It's uh, the clubhouse was totally revamped, I mean, redone. And it's it's funny because I saw that, and then you walk into, like, a Port St. Lucie where the Mets play, and you walk into theirs, and you're like, whoa, it's a just a marked difference, you know, from one clubhouse to another. And you can, from what I've noticed, you kind of see that in some of the, some of, some of the clubhouses and some of the facilities are, are, are spectacular, and some of them are just okay and nice, okay. But, yeah, they did a great job on it. MLive.com. You can follow him on Twitter, at Scott DeCamp. Scott, what about uh, the health of this baseball team? I think going into the season, uh, the biggest question mark, obviously, is the health of some of the marquee guys like a Miguel Cabrera, J.D. Martinez, a V-Mart. Uh, you've been down there with the guys. How are they coming along? Well, that's the thing, and I think that's the million-dollar question with them. And it's been, and it's an aging roster, so you've got, um, you know, J.D., who it was just announced a few days ago that he'll be out three to four weeks, uh, you know, with that Liz Frank ligament strain in his right foot. You know, he, he injured that when he was kind of was going to try to slide to make a catch and pulled up at the last second and didn't have to do it, kind of got caught in an awkward spot with his foot. So that's, that's, a, that's a bit of a blow. It's not a, an absolutely devastating one in terms of the length of the injury, but, you know, provided he bounces back like they think he will, he should be back soon, but that's still not the way you want to start the season. And then Cabrera got hurt. He wasn't even hurt in camp. He was hurt in the WBC. Um, he heard a, he felt a pop in his back, which I can't imagine is a good thing when when you when when you say that I felt or heard a pop. Um, but he was in the lineup the last two days. Uh, he was one for two the first day, two for three the second day. So as far as him seeing the ball and everything, it looks like it's coming back to him, and I think they're probably just trying to take it easy with him. So, And those are the two big ones, you know, as far as the, as far as the injuries go. So. Scott, have we, seen the, the, have we seen the best of Miguel Cabrera? Is he now past his prime, heading down that proverbial uh, hill a little bit, or does he still have maybe an MVP caliber season in him? Well, you know, I was kind of asking that question last year at the beginning of the year, because if you recall, he, he got off to – there was a stretch there where he really struggled, and I think a lot of people, myself included, were thinking, "Whoa, is this uh, is, is this like what you said? Is this the end of? Is he kind of hitting to the downside of things now?" And then he went on a tear, and he's like, "Nope, yep, he's back." So, you know, I, I think that's another big question. And you know, physically, how long can a guy hang in there? And he's just so talented that, you know just with his ability that he can that, that carries a lot of it for him but eventually your body breaks down now you know i have the same questions about victor martinez you know how much pop does he have in his bat yeah you know he's not getting any younger either so that's the thing with this roster it's 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 getting, it's aging and so you're going to run into those issues that they're going to be running out of gas here soon Inside about the Detroit Tigers from a guy who covers the team on MLive.com. Scott DeCamp joining us tonight. Daniel Norris going through the, 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 the vaunted dead arm period. Can you tell me what dead arm means and uh, what Daniel's going through right now, Scott? Well, I think when people hear, like fans and others hear dead arm, they think, uh-oh, that means that there's nothing left in it. And, you know, I, and that's, that's a fair assumption for a lot of people, but uh, and, you know, Norris told us after the game yesterday, you know, they played in Kissimmee against the Braves, and, you know, he gave up, you know, nine nine runs on 13 hits, and he said he just couldn't, didn't have it, couldn't find it, didn't have the extra pop in his arm, didn't have the extra juice. And so he just, you know, but it's not, he goes, arm feels dead. He goes, it's not dead in the sense that I'm done. He goes, it's it just felt heavy. He said it felt like it was a, a million pounds, basically, hanging there. Um, and then, we asked Brad Osmus after the game, and, and he's like, yeah, he's got a little bit of a dead arm, but he goes, dead arm doesn't mean, you know, it's, it's done. It just means fatigue. And he goes, all pitchers go through that. It's just sometimes, though, when a guy doesn't have his best stuff, you know, a young pitcher like Norris has to learn how to just hang in there and just battle and, and eat innings and save his bullpen. And that's that's the big takeaway. He really wants him to be able to, if, you know, 
if you're going from the bullpen and warm ups and going out to the mound in the game, and you don't feel like you have your best stuff, don't just automatically say, "Okay, oh well, I don't have it." Oh well, you know, you got you got to battle. You got to keep battling. So that's that was a big takeaway. Daniel Nor is so important for that starting pitching rotation for the Tigers, but you also look at uh, that number five spot in the rotation, and it seems like Scott, it's coming down to Annabelle Sanchez versus Matthew Boyd. Uh, how do you handy, handicap that race for the fifth starting position in that rotation? Yeah, the way I kind of see it is, I mean, they both pitched just so well lately. I mean, of course, Boyd's been been really good all spring and Sanchez has been you know he was pretty bad early on it's been giving up home runs and whatnot and then he made a, a minor mechanical tweak and he really worked hard at that in fact drove one day drove I don't know if it was two hours just to just to go throw on a day he wasn't supposed to pitch but go throw to Osmus in a bullpen just so he could work on that so he was really devoted to it and I gotta believe just because of his track record I I gotta think that if it's if it's a toss-up, that he probably goes with Sanchez because of that experience, because of the track record, because they're paying him so much money, you know. And and with Boyd, who's looking great, you know, he's he's really coming along. I don't I don't think you're as much of a in a hurry to get stuff out of him now. They're going to need it, and if someone like Norris has trouble and takes him a while to get his arm back, then that gives you a little more flexibility. If, Boyd can continue to deliver like he is, and then Sanchez continues to stay in this rhythm that he's in right now. Good stuff here tonight from Scott DeCamp. Uh, you can join him online on MLive.com. He writes for the uh, MLive newspaper. He covers a couple of different things in addition to Detroit Tiger baseball. In addition to that fifth spot in the starting rotation, Scott, I, I think the other roster spot that I'm considering uh, kind of a hot competition is center field. If you ask me tonight, you know, a week before the regular season starts, who, this, who the everyday center fielder is going to be, I, I don't know that I could really tell you. Who's it going to be? Who's it going to shake out and be Scott going forward in center field for the Tigers? Oh, what makes it interesting with that is now they're trying to fill that right field spot too with Martinez at least for a few weeks, and so that impacts things a little bit. But like the, the lineup that I saw that's going out there tomorrow, um, I think it has they've got Collins out. There. No, they've got Jacoby Jones, and this is just all by memory. I saw it on Twitter earlier when I was after I got after I landed in Grand Rapids today when I flew back. But it had, uh, I think it had Matuk, and I thought he was on the lineup. It was, and um, I think Collins wasn't. But I actually see, I like Jacoby Jones a lot. I think he's got the most upside. Now, the question is whether they want to develop him a little bit more in AAA. Because if that's the case, then I think Collins is probably, for me, for my money, he's the guy. But, you know, I think they're going to give Mikey a, a shot as well. So those are three guys that are all in the running for that center field and right field positions at the moment. But, you know, like I said, to me, long term, I like Jones the best. Um, but, you know, if I had to go with one right now, I'd go with Collins. Okay, and we'll see what happens in center field. We've got Tiger baseball tonight for you, 6.30 on the broadcast with Dan Dickerson and Jim Price. Uh, another guy who was in the rotation last year in center field was Anthony Ghost. Uh, now I'm reading in my newspaper that uh, they're trying him out as a pitcher. I had no idea that this was that, – that, that was a wild card to me. I did not see that one coming. Is that a serious thing, Scott? Uh, could you see Anthony Ghost – actually taking the mound in, in a pitching capacity for the Tigers, or is this just a, a little flirtation that really won't go anywhere? With all due respect to Ghost, I just <laughs> I just don't see it happening. I mean, I, they're, they say they're going to entertain it and give him maybe a couple bullpens. But, and, and he did, you know, in Bel he's from Bellflower, California, and as a high schooler he, he was registering in the mid-'90s. And that's really what he was, was a pitcher, and then he converted to an outfielder when he got into pro baseball. But... I just, I just don't see it. I have a, I mean, because you've been out of it that long, and the guy can't pick it up. And guys have done it before, like Rick Ankiel is a good example. But you know, Rick Ankiel was also just kind of a, one of those special, unique athletes. I'm not saying Ghost is not a good athlete, but. You know, I just I have a hard time seeing that with him, more and being more than just an experiment. Yeah, I'm reading the newspaper. The kid throws uh, mid to upper 90s and uh, all this stuff, and I'm thinking, yeah, I can't believe Anthony Ghost is even with the team anymore. He had some issues down in Toledo last year uh, with the coaching staff and all the rest of it. Uh, still part of the organization at this point, and uh, we'll see what happens with him. Uh, Ian Kinsler, 
Uh, I don't know if you watched much of the uh, WC, WBC, Scott, but Kinsler hit a, a two-run homer early in that championship game. Uh, um, Team USA wins for the first time in the, the World Baseball Classic. Uh, have you talked to Ian about uh, his experience in the WBC, and, and what do you think about that as a tournament uh, during the spring training period? Yeah, we did actually catch up to Ian, like, really right when he got in the clubhouse that next day. It wasn't the next day, it was two days later, actually. So if they would have played on Wednesday, I want to say he got back to the clubhouse Friday. But I'm trying to think of the whole timeline here. Everything's running together for, for me there. But he was he said it was just an unbelievable experience and that the team meshed really well. He credited Jim Leland for that, for composing, putting together the lineup or the roster, I should say, and then getting those guys to mesh and, and to play well together and, you know, Ian, you know, he's he's one of those guys who um, he's got a little bit of, uh, you know, I won't say the word, but vinegar <laughs> in, in him. He's a guy who's got a little, he's got a little, he's a little bit cocky, which is good. I mean, and, you know, you kind of see it when he hit that home run. He's not, he's not lacking for confidence, I guess you should say. But, you know, he, he got kind of caught up, too. I'm sure you saw where one of his comments about um, American and Latin American players and the different culture cultures uh it kind of got him and i wouldn't want to say got him in hot water but people kind of blew it up yeah people need to settle down scott i mean he didn't say anything i didn't think um no and he, he said that too and i don't know if he saw his comments from when we actually interviewed him but he's like you know because i'm a ball player because right. i'm not a politician you know i just i say what i think as a ball player i'm not there it's not motivated by anything i just speak my mind and mm-hmm. I, go, I just play baseball and, and yeah. that's you know I, I don't think he's lying i think i believe him when he says that you wonder why athletes aren't candid anymore or give you anything interesting uh, that's because we <laughs> are all over them when they say anything interesting and i don't think that was a big deal uh what, what does scott DeCamp think about the wbc uh, it's pretty controversial uh, a lot of people think it's putting players at risk uh, for injury going into the regular season. Other people th- say, well, it's better than spring training. What, what do you think about it? Is, is it? is it something going forward uh, that uh, deserves our interest and attention? I think, um, yeah, okay, it helps when the Americans win, right? You know, it, as far as people around here, they get a little bit excited just because, uh, you know, their country is doing well. I, I think largely it's a positive thing because it puts you in an environment of, trying to win games you're trying to get hits and win games rather in spring training you're working on things that's why when people get wrapped up over spring training records and and stats and stuff you, you can, that can be way overblown because not not to say that if a team is just really struggling and and you can kind of just look at it by the eye test like if a guy is just really scuffling either on the mound or at the plate or wherever you can kind of just see it whether you mm-hmm. look at the stats or not it's just more the eye test type stuff but WBC, I, I do kind of like just because of the competitive thing and there's the pride with your country. And, yeah, there's that risk of injury, but really you could injure yourself in spring training as sure. well. I know you're not maybe going as hard, but those guys are working nonstop in spring training. It's not They're not just showing up the park playing a three-hour game and going home. You know, they're there at 8 in the morning and leaving at, you know, 6, 6 o'clock or whatever it is, you know, so... It, you know, it's a big time investment for those guys. We're excited to be joined tonight by Scott DeCamp from MLive.com uh, talking about this Tigers baseball team. The regular season gets started next week. Of course, we'll have it for you all. 162 games on WCSR. A couple of last things, Scott, before we let you go. Uh, you've been around the team quite a bit this spring and, and watched a lot of Tiger baseball. Is there a guy on that roster uh, who will probably go north with the team that, that our listeners might not know about who could have an impact on the season? Yeah, that's a great question, too. Because, you know, just kind of, you know, most of the guy, everyone's pretty much a, is a, pretty much a known commodity. I, I don't really see anyone that's going to join the roster at this time. Um, but like I said, I'm, you know, I keep saying I'm big on Jac- Jacoby Jones, but granted, he's got a really small sample size at this point. But, you know, there's been some guys who have really, done some nice things you know who's had a well, obviously castellanos has had a huge uh spring and that's right. you know that's no surprise that's a name that everybody knows but someone like that it kind of gets forgotten and people might not think much of him but andrew romine's had a nice spring and you know he obviously everyone expects him to be around but he really is a valuable player for that team just because he can play so many different positions he, he really is a good athlete in fact he's one of the best athletes on the team um they can even stick him out in the outfield if they need to. So 
he's been playing center field actually the last couple of days. So um, he's just a guy. There's no one really that's gonna. I don't think gonna jump off the page in terms of guys you haven't heard of. But you know, I think it's just gonna come down to guys like the biggest questions are like where are they gonna bat Castellanos? Mm-hmm. You know, and then the health thing. I mean, um, like we talked about with Cabrera, and then how does JD come back? But then the, also the pitching and. Largely lately, the starting pitching's been good until last night. You know, the last week, week and a half, it's been pretty dominant. But you know, it, it's it's not going to be that way. It's a long season. It's a grind. So we'll see how if these guys can stay healthy and if they can perform. So well, you you wrote an article about Nick Castellanos uh, a day or two ago and where he will be in the lineup. Uh, a lot of talk that he could actually be in the number two spot. Will he bat number five? He's been the Tigers' best hitter in the spring. He's leading all of baseball, I believe, in doubles, uh, hitting for power, finding some gaps. Uh, where's Nick's best spot on this lineup in, in your mind, Scott? Personally, I like him in the number two spot. Now, Osmus was saying it depends on whether they face a right-hander or a left-hander, and that has partially to do with who else they might be have put in the lineup with them. You know, with you know who's going to play? Are they going to bring a left-handed batter in the lineup to face a righty? And but I, I just like. Because Castellanos, I mean, he hasn't struck out a ton. Um, and, yeah, you know, if a guy's hitting for power like that, you don't really want to necessarily waste him. But at the same time, he's – I don't know if, he, if you guys have noticed, but he's in the best shape of his life, too. And the guy actually is running the bases better than, than he ever has. And um, I just like what he brings to the table in that number two spot between Kinsler and then Cabrera. I think he just – the, the problem I've seen with the Tigers – even going back to Leland, was they always had trouble setting the table for the big guys. And I think they need someone who can help set that table, and I think uh, Castellanos is a guy who can do that. What about Brad Osmus, uh, Scott? Are you surprised that he is still a manager of this baseball team after missing the playoffs last year, uh, obviously nearing the end of his contract? Uh, Al Alvila, uh, seemingly in some of the leaked reports, uh, you know, Osmus was going to be gone. Uh, then, of course, they, they announced that he was going to stay. Are you surprised that he's still the manager, and, and he, is he the right guy to be leading this team right now? You know, it's tough because I haven't been around him as much just because I haven't covered the team. before. I mean, I covered them sporadically the last few years, and then, you know, I got a little more exposure this spring, of course. But I just I think the general consensus, and not just from the team, I haven't really heard this from the team or from, the management or anything like that, but is that I think there's just there isn't that like resounding <laughs> yes he's the guy that can do it for us. It's almost like there, everyone has questions about him and they think that maybe he's not enough of a disciplinarian. You know, he's not maybe respected as well as someone like Leland was. So I think there's doubts out there, and I think obviously this is a pivotal year for him I'm, I'm not going out on a limb saying that but I mean with the contract coming up and everything but he really needs to have a big year this year and it's going to be tough because you know the Indians are are you pretty young and you know they're kind of the hot team right now but you know it's, it's going to be a tough one I don't so. see any reason and I'm a as big a Tiger fan as you're going to find Scott I don't see any reason to see why they'd be a lot better uh, this year than they were last year I, I thought Cameron Mabin was a big part uh, of that team that sparked them last year and gave them a chance late in the season to, to maybe grab a playoff spot. Now you're going to tell me, well, Mabin only played 90 games and he was hurt a lot, but, but then you're going to turn around and tell me, well, Cabrera and V-Mart and uh, J.D., they're all going to stay healthy this year and they're going to have this big turnaround. I, I don't know why we can expect them to all stay healthy and, and for this to necessarily be a playoff team. And by the things that you said about Cleveland and the division that you're in with the Royals right now, I think it's going to be tough for the Tigers to get into the playoffs again this year. What about you? I agree with it. And I, and I think it's, I think you're banking on an awful lot to go right in order for these things to happen. You know, if you're, if you're talking about, well, Cabrera's got to stay healthy, you know, um, Norris's arms has to bounce back. Fulmer has to avoid the sophomore slump. You know, Victor Martinez is going to have a pop up here. All those things pretty much have to happen in a positive way for the Tigers to contend, I think. It's great so. stuff, uh, Scott. I really appreciate your time. Uh, you can read all of his stuff on MLive.com. Uh, if you go there, you can click into his name. They've got a, 
a little bit of an archive of some of his articles that he's written recently. And, and uh, what's next for you? Do you continue to cover the Tigers, or are you on to other sports as we enter into the spring and summer? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pitch in from time to time, but that kind of remains to be seen. Um, you know, when you, like Evan Woodbury took the beat last, last summer, and when you're down covering spring training, and I know it is a plum job, I'm not going to deny that, but you are working. They're long days. It's a grind just like it is for the players. Now you're not on the field playing. But so I, you know, I'll, I'll try to give him some, a spell every now and then. But, you know, they've got me up. I'm kind of the jack of all trades for M Live. I've covered, you know, a little bit of Lions. I've covered Michigan State, a little bit of Michigan, a lot of Notre Dame, especially this last year. Of course, Michigan State and Notre Dame had miserable seasons, so hopefully not for Tigers fans' sake, I'm not the curse <laughs> that's following me for the other teams I've covered because they've been awful. But I do a little bit of everything, and you know I've been done a little bit of everything in my career from prep sports to management, you know, to those kind of things. So really, wherever they need me, you, you, you could see me anywhere. I could pop up anywhere. We'll be looking for them on MLive.com. Also, uh, at Scott DeCamp on Twitter. Scott, thank you for the time, and enjoy Tiger baseball this season. Thanks for having me on. Have a good night.